My name is John McKay. I'm the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood, and I'm uh, happy to uh, welcome to uh, the podium here uh, uh, Joseph Petulier and uh, Megan Leslie, the NDP uh, member for Halifax. That's right. And uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Elizabeth May shortly, um, who is doing a point of privilege, I believe, in the House. Um, you have uh, sitting or uh, standing to my left here, an uh, amazing young man who has done an amazing athletic accomplishment. Joseph uh, has unicycled 5,000 kilometers uh, across this country from Victoria, BC to here and dipping down a little south of Lake Superior into the US and back again over the course, I think you said five and a half months uh, only took a break once every uh, two weeks and uh, did have a break though in Winnipeg for a bit of time. Uh, it is a formidable um, athletic accomplishment and I think it needs to be recognized that. And even more, he did it for, uh, for a very worthwhile purpose and that is to draw attention to the reality of climate change. Now Joseph, I did not uh, unicycle 5,000 kilometers this summer, however I did visit BC, Alberta, Ontario, Nova Scotia, and Nunavut. And what I found is the question was the same every time I sat down with anybody, whether it's in a Tim Hortons or anywhere else, and that is, what's up with the weather? You know, I know Canadians love to talk about the weather, <laughs> but the weather isn't what the weather used to be. And uh, the weather and the predictability of the weather has, seems to go all fooey. I did find, and I'll give you this as free advice, Megan, is uh, discussions about polar vortexes don't work. Uh, you know, you can talk about polar vortexes until uh, the cows come home, but it simply doesn't work. Um, and, uh, and there is change, and I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Joseph to come up here and talk about his observations, uh, about why he did what he did, and the message that he wants to get to Canadians, and not only to Canadians, but to our government. And after uh, Joseph speaks, I'm going to ask Megan to come, and then I hopefully uh, um, uh, Elizabeth will have arrived. Uh, I'll summarize it and then uh, open it up to questions from uh, anyone who wishes to ask questions. So again, thank you, and uh, Joseph, I think you deserve an applause. Bravo. Oh. Go ahead. Right on. Thank you so much. I wanted to thank. Uh, John McKay and his office for organizing this opportunity and uh, also Megan Leslie and uh, Murray Rankin who was also at the um, uh, event when I arrived at noon in front of Parliament Hill along with MP Ted Shu. I want to thank uh, MPs uh, Matthew Kelway and Adam Adamenko who also uh, met with me during the trip as well as Ted Shu. Um, you know this really is what I was um, what I was hoping for is, is a show, sorry. What I was hoping for is a sign of unity. And it's so important right now in advance of the 2015 federal election. You know, we've had lots of debate about climate change in the past. Uh, and I actually left on this trip because it felt like, to be honest, it had subsided kind of to the back of uh, the back ledger points of discussion. Uh, and this needs to be a priority and it needs to be a ballot box issue. But what's more, uh, there's a fear, I think, that a change of government doesn't necessarily mean uh, that we come to terms with the, the full gravity of the climate crisis. For that, it requires uh, our parties to work together, uh, frankly, better than they have in the past. And uh, it's especially an exciting opportunity right now because with, of course, uh, Paris uh, COP, Conference of the Parties fast approaching in 2015. Uh, this weekend with a climate march in New York at the UN Climate Summit is expected to be the, uh, the biggest protest in the history of the climate movement. It's a chance for us to really demonstrate a political willpower for climate action and uh, promote amongst all our parties the international consensus on climate change, which is that we need to do action and which is that Canada in particular has really fallen behind in that regard. Uh, something else that I kind of wanted to talk about is youth engagement, and it's something that I got asked a lot about. Um, I don't know if I consider myself a youth anymore. I'd like to. Um, a lot of reporters used to ask, you know, 
so you're in your early 20s and I did that for the first half of the trip and then somebody said oh you're 24 you're in your mid 20s <laughs> um, so apparently yeah I may or may not be a youth anymore but I'm certainly younger unfortunately than a lot of Canadians uh, who vote right now and I actually think there is a connection there to the climate issue anyone who is of my generation and really understands the gravity of this crisis understands that it needs to be a ballot box issue uh, and that it's something that we need to address right now for us it's not just the first priority it's actually in many ways all our priorities it determines you know where we choose to set down roots it determines when we're looking at homes you know are they on the floodplain basically if we see the meters of sea level rise that's anticipated within the next century uh, how's that going to affect land value? But what's more importantly, it affects, you know, how, how are we going to get our food? It affects the survival of our children. So, you know, to have this as an issue that frankly requires some fool to ride halfway across the country to, uh, to raise it as a point of discussion in advance of our 42nd general election is sort of a sad state of affairs. But I realize, you know, it's still early days as well for this election, and I'm really hoping that uh, amongst all, you know, between all these events, uh, you know, we can change that. And I think in, in large part, you know, when we talk about young people losing faith in democracy, this could be one of the reasons why, but it could also be a way that we regain hope for the effectiveness of the process. So I think our public institutions, our government, our parliamentary democracy's ability to address the climate crisis doesn't only determine the viability of planet Earth as a habitat for humans, but it may also determine the viability of our democratic process here in Canada. Thank you. Je voudrais féliciter Joseph Boutelier pour ses efforts. Il a pris des, membres, des, des mesures audacieuses pour attirer l'attention sur le changement climatique, de convaincre les Canadiens, des membres du parti politique et aussi le gouvernement du Canada, que ce soit le problème le plus important auquel nous sommes confrontés, confrontés aujourd'hui. And I'd like to thank Joseph for letting me be a part of this press conference and keeping us up to date with everything that's going on and uh, also John McKay's office and and you as well for actually organizing this press conference. There are uh, points of parliamentary privilege aside, there are three MPs here uh, from three different political parties who very often do not agree on the solutions. But you know what? We really agree on the problem here today. We are all keenly aware of climate change, how this is the number one issue facing us today and facing future generations. And Joseph talked about, I think you used the word some fool on a unicycle. I would, uh, <laughs> those aren't the words I would use. I would say some hero on a unicycle. But I did want to talk about how it's incredible that in this day and age, we're, we're using these kinds of tricks to try and bring attention to climate change, but we have to. It's a conversation that's not happening in our communities as much as it should, and it's a conversation that's not happening in the House of Commons at all. So congrats to you for taking this on and actually trying to draw attention to the most important issue uh, facing us today. Sans aucun doute, une, plainte, uh, une planète saine et écologique écologiquement équilibré et le don le plus important que nous puissions donner aux générations futures. Uh, so thank you very much for doing this and um, he's all yours folks. Well come on Joseph, come on up to the uh, to the microphone. Um, I don't think, come on you're ready in here. <laughs> I don't think I need to uh, summarize what we've said. We're kind of all on the same page here. Uh, this is a probably the issue of facing uh, facing us all that uh, makes all other issues pale in comparison. So, uh, so Joseph, uh, I'm sure there may be some questions here. I'm the only reporter, I'll ask the question. <laughs> I'm a CBC television. Uh, Joseph, what are, how do people react to you when they see you unicycling? And do they ask you what you're doing? I mean, how, how do people... How yeah, do I mean, they absolutely do, and that's... Um, it's not the only reason I chose a unicycle, but I can say in retrospect, it's the best reason. <laughs> um, it really was a great conversation starter, a great icebreaker. Uh, and in terms of reactions, everything you can possibly imagine, you know, some people just how laughing and 
just a lot of blank stares and confused looks. Um, but also, you know, some folks that really, I think, got it. You know, I wanted to do the unicycle because, in part, it's something that's a little more lighthearted and accessible than a lot of the kind of the gloom and doom campaigns we see about climate change. And people reacted really well to that. Um, and, you know, this kind of, you sort of use the word, you know, a fool on the unicycle, kind of a gimmick. Um, what do you think about the state of affairs in Canada when you have to use gimmicks to get people to talk about this? Well, yeah, I mean, I think as, uh, as we've kind of noted, um, it's depressing, frankly. You know, it's we're not where we should be. Um, but it's also, you know, you look at the, the history of social movements and, you know, maybe not folks on unicycles, but uh, it's always required people power. It's always required a citizen's movement. Um, what I think we're kind of at this weird um, skip and step, you know, between the people and politicians right now, where unfortunately, I feel like our government is deceiving people about the unequivocal science of climate change. And that's fueling a lot of the reluctance for people to embrace this uh, and embrace the solutions. So, you know, we need some government leadership in order to build the kind of leadership on the citizen side to present the political willpower. So I think both sides, frankly, need to step up to the plate. We're seeing it a lot with people right now. I've mentioned, you know, the climate summit in New York, uh, and I'm sure that will be huge and thousands of Canadians as well will be representing our interests there. Um, but, you know, on the political side, I was really hoping that the 2015 federal election uh, would be the time that we saw this rise to the fore and become a wedge issue. And it hasn't yet, so that's kind of my number one aim, I guess. So, so let's let maybe just interrupt our flow here because Elizabeth has has uh, uh -huh. arrived, and uh, I've noticed that Elizabeth always seems to have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, we'll go back to uh, the Q and A after uh, Elizabeth. Well, that's that's terribly kind of you. I apologize to particularly to Joseph. I just was in the house to raise a question of privilege about the numbers of time allocations on debates, and I my the debate about my issues went a little longer than I thought it would. Look, I'm I'm enormously honored to be here with Joseph Boutelier. His heroic I've never heard of any Canadian to ever unicycle over so much of Canada. So that in itself, but for the commitment that he's shown. He's so articulate, he's so committed, and we do recognize anyone who understands climate science realizes that there is no more important issue facing us as a species, certainly no more important issue for any, anyone in government, particularly a prime minister, to consider yourself a responsible prime minister and not to understand the science of climate change, to make trips to the Arctic and not mention the threat to the whole world from the rapidly melting Arctic ice, not to talk about the threat of climate change, and in fact, not only to do nothing domestically to reduce our emissions against a target he himself chose when he went to Copenhagen in 2009, but actually in our international negotiations to watch the Canadian delegation under instructions from the Prime Minister block progress and work as saboteurs against international progress. I attend the climate negotiations and in Warsaw at the 19th Conference of the Parties last November and December, I promised the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who announced at that meeting that in order to give some impetus for progress to global negotiations for a new treaty, which is slated to be concluded no later than December 2015 at the 21st Conference of the Parties, Ban Ki-moon took it on himself to say we need a climate leaders summit to focus on climate solutions. Stephen Harper was invited to that. He'll be in New York anyway at exactly the same time and he's decided not to attend. I've asked him in question period to attend and I've asked him personally to attend because this is not a negotiating session. The climate leaders summit is to focus on solutions and I frankly think it would be beneficial for Stephen Harper to expose himself to the solutions and to the science and to actually move Canada from being a country that's blocking progress to the one that actually helps. Uh, the, the global mobilization, the people's mobilization that Joseph has mentioned, the, the large march which is going to take place Sunday in New York, September 21st, is in support of what the Secretary General for the United Nations is trying to do. But I don't think any Canadian has taken on as much personally 
to show that support and show that commitment than what Joseph Boutelier has done in his unicycle campaign over five and a half months across Canada. And I just wanted to come to say thank you for what you've done. You're here. <clears throat> so Joseph, come on back for the, the uh, de rigueur grilling by the press here. So uh, anyone who wants to uh, ask further questions of Joseph. Actually, I did want to ask each of the each of the parties very briefly what you expect Canada to um, do at the summit, or what you think they will do, because it's some kind it's a pledge. We expect leaders to pledge action next Tuesday. So, uh, if you could each just very briefly tell me what you think will happen. Good question. You're in the middle. Okay, of or I'm, I'm the monkey. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, regrettably, I don't think anything's going to happen if we don't attend. Probably um, all have the same yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, you know, it, the, the first rule of leadership is to show up. The last rule of leadership is to show up. Um, uh, we have uh, had a, essentially a lost decade. Um, it's not only the withdrawal from Kyoto, it's the uh, it's withdrawal, stomping on, shooting and killing Kyoto. Uh, then entering into the uh, Copenhagen targets, which uh, many people don't even believe that we're going to me uh, meet. And those were the, the prime minister's targets themselves. So um, not only do we have an absence of leadership, uh, we're not, uh, we, we, don't punch in, uh, we don't punch above our weight. We don't punch below our rate. We, uh, weight, we jumped out of the ring. And um, so we're not, uh, we're not in the game. And uh, I think uh, it would be a nice, <laughs> nice but not anticipated, if the prime minister actually got into the ring. Yeah, I, I would say I would be very, very surprised if we took action. I would eat my hat if we took action. Uh, i it's, you I, <laughs> I think it's a safe bet, though. Um, it's not just about inaction on climate. I mean, look at the way this government treats people who care about our lakes and rivers. They call them radicals. Uh, look at the way they use the words climate change or carbon tax in the House of Commons as a threat or some kind of jeer at us. So it's, it's not even just a lack of action. It's this complete disdain for anybody who wants to do anything about climate change and about the issue as well. So I'll, I'll eat several hats. <laughs> just say it. As far as I understand it, the Minister of Environment, Leona Aglukuk, will be attending. Uh, and to give you the very short answer, what do I expect from Canada next week in New York? Absolutely nothing. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, let's, uh, Joseph, do you have anybody got any more other questions for Joseph? Well, oh, it's me, I have yeah. one more. <laughs> oh, I know you've, you've been joined by a few colleagues okay, there. Okay, go ahead. All of whom are quite shy, apparently. <laughs> well, I just want to find out, are you stopping here or are you going across the country? Uh, this is end destination for the unicycle ride. Uh, I still like to say it's the beginning of the journey in terms of what I'm trying to accomplish and uh, we'll have to come up with some other creative uh, methods, I guess, of getting this back on the map. Uh, I will be attending the Climate March in New York and I will be attending Climate Fast here on Parliament Hill on the 28th. So I'll be in Ottawa for at least a, a few weeks before heading back to my hometown of Victoria. And I'll also be in New York for the Climate March, which, uh, which there, I anticipate tens of thousands of people will be there. I believe public mobilization is needed. When we ask where the leadership is, it certainly isn't in Ottawa. And in Canada, the leadership is the people of Canada, and particularly Joseph and people who have put their, their other lives on hold to work to get action on the climate crisis. I also will be joining the Climate Fast here in Ottawa. Okay. Uh, absent any other uh, questions, um, that's finished. And I think, uh, Joseph, you, we, the people of Canada, representing the people of Canada, want to thank you for your uh, incredible commitment uh, to, uh, to this issue and, um, and recognize that both in your youth and in your uh, athleticism, you've made a statement that maybe a lot of the rest of us could, uh, could never have made. Um, and uh, just... An, Oh, I have uh, actually uh, written to Leona Glukak asking to be credentialed to go to the meeting. And I offered the, that if she gave me the credentials, uh, she could pour a bucket of ice over my head. Um, thus far, I have not received a response. Anyways, thank you very much. Take care.